A lady writes in to say, my husband and I are eager to start a classical Christian school in our community. What advice would you give us as we begin? Buy a lot of coffee, stock up on cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> so, cla <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> so classical Christian schools are started uh, in the strength of adrenaline, caffeine, and the Holy Spirit. Um, so it's, it really is a, an, an adventure. I would uh, not try to do anything part, I would encourage them to not um, engage in half measures. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do this. What, what would be, a, what's a common temptation for a half measure that you would avoid? Um, to hire a pro too soon. Okay, the, uh, basically uh, what I would er encourage people to do is say the people who want to start a classical Christian school are generally going to be the people who've read the literature, been inspired by the books, have visited a few other schools, were inspired by what they saw there. And I, I wouldn't just say, okay, let's do it, flip a switch, and we're well off and so that we're going to give some money and hire a gun, you know bring in a hired gun to implement the vision. Okay. I, th I think the people who have caught the vision should be the people who are implementing it in the early, okay. excuse me, in the early years. So um, get the thing airborne. You want to be all the way in. Uh, you, all all the way, you, yeah. So mm -hmm. it, I think it's good that the, um, that the future superintendent clean a few bathrooms. And the, the, right. Yeah, you know, the board chairman um, does, you know, Paints, uh -huh. <laughs> paints a few hallways and uh, uh, puts together a few lockers, and I, I think that that kind of skin in the game mm -hmm. is going to be invaluable down the down the road. It won't make everything run smoothly forever and ever, but it means mm -hmm. that you are you are invested in a blood, sweat, and tears way yeah. that will make you care about the institution in the way that you ought to care about it. Are there any other common determiners for with, without this, you're just not going to make it. With this, your chances of making it, you know, multiply by a hundredfold. Yeah, another thing I would say is to keep, keep the steering committee, keep the steering committee and the early board small and focused. Mm -hmm. don't, um, don't adopt big tent thinking or strategies early on. Paying the light bill is important, but it's not as important as keeping the vision sharp. Uh -huh. Because if you say, "Oh, we're we're gonna we'll invite so and so onto the board because he's a he's a wealthy businessman and I think one of his grandchildren wants to go to the school," you know that kind of thing is going to di dilute your vision. It's going to set you up for the first. Um, the first great challenge mm -hmm. is going to come between money or your vision and you're going right. to be flipped over right away. So just trying to appeal to a certain demographic or whatever. Yeah, you, you need to say, uh, look, here's our vision. This is what we want to do. And we want to pitch this vision to parents who are doing their job. Mm -hmm. Because when you hang out the shingle, you're either hanging out a shingle, you're either going to be an attractive place for parents who are doing their job yeah. or an attractive place for parents who aren't doing their job. Yeah. All right, so now, I, I'm not against planting both kinds of schools. Uh -huh. Let's say, um, if, if you wanted to plant uh, a school for uh, orphans. Yeah. Something's well, missional. In it's some missional, way. but it would have to be funded from somewhere else. Right. So, if you, um, uh, so if you planted a school in the inner city mm -hmm. as an opportunity for f functional orphans or orphans, that's, that's a wonderful thing to do. But now you're answering to the church that's sending you as a, mis mission, uh, a missionary school. Right. Um, but if you are wanting the school to make it as a, um, a school that pays its own way, then mm -hmm. you're going to have to do it by attracting parents who are doing their job as parents. And you have to make yeah. it the kind of attractive, you have to make the school an attractive place for that kind of parent. How important is the local church in if you're starting a classical school and how would you cultivate a healthy relationship there? Okay, so I, I believe that healthy classical Christian schools 
cannot remain such unless there is a significant involvement in the life of the school from at least one healthy, like-minded church. Okay. So I can't tell you how many times uh, people have started a school, a classical Christian school, and they're a year or two into it, and they think something like, we have to start a church too. Mm -hmm. Because uh, basically, y y the, uh, the kids, ha I think, have to be, or a significant portion of the kids, have to be worshiping in a way that's consonant with mm -hmm. the education they're receiving. You can't, you can't have discipline and order and Western civilization and the glories of Christendom five days out of the week and then on the weekend go worship at a mall mm -hmm. as, and in ways that indicate... With a smoke machine and shine Jesus smoke machine, shine. Yeah, correct. You yeah. can't. It, it, that's not going to fly. Yeah. That's not going to work. Uh, so I don't think you have to be a parochial school sponsored by one church, mm -hmm. but I think the school has to be welcoming to the kind of churches that are doing their job also. One of the things I've noticed in classical schools is the common tendency to stall out at sixth grade. Yes. They, they, they do really well, and then somewhere when they hit their junior high into secondary years, everything falls apart and they can't make a leap all the way into secondary. Are there any... Yeah. Thoughts for how that, what, you, what do you have to do in order for that to work? We, we had that very problem. For us, it was uh, eighth grade, and we were hemorrhaging at the eighth grade. Um, and we made a concerted effort to keep that, uh, those kids one year and, and worked at it. I would say one of the key things, as it, and I know you didn't set this up, but mm -hmm. your wife happened to write a book, <laughs> <laughs> classical, classical Me, Classical V, oh, which, yeah. which explains to students, it's a book on classical education for yeah. students that explains to them what is being done to them right. and why. Um, because oftentimes, the reason your classical school works so great through uh, elementary school mm -hmm. is the kids are all in the Paul Parrott stage and they can't argue back yet. They don't have, they, they're happy to do what you're doing to, to them. Yeah. But when they move into the Pert stage, which you should know about having mm. been committed to the classical model and they become pert about classical Christian education mm. and say why are you doing this to me there, there should be answers right. uh, supplied to that they should they should uh, basically you want your school to be a place where there's high morale among the staff and high morale among the students so so the schools that are falling apart as they transition to secondary one possible place to look is, are you actually communicating the vision to the students themselves, not just the faculty and parents, but to the students themselves? Right. And the other thing to keep in mind is, in elementary, the teachers, you've got one teacher, basically, usually doing all, all the teaching throughout the day, unless you bring in a music teacher or a Latin teacher. But one teacher is doing the, doing the day. Uh, in secondary, it diffuses. You've got a science teacher, math teacher, history teacher, mm -hmm. and diffuses like this. And it's easy for things to, get, like a washing machine out of kilter, it's easy mm -hmm. for it to start doing this because the, the faculty aren't communicating. Mm -hmm. So you should, um, don't be reluctant to inquire into how much your students are getting, how much are they retaining, mm -hmm. and information is your friend. If they're not getting it, then what's, what are you spending all this energy for? Okay. Thank you.